through this top 10 for time management, we've already covered is be a list writer. Just, just get that stuff down on paper, um, get it covered, that way we don't have to remember it. Number two is to write down a top five priorities for the day. So naturally there are lots of things we have to do on that daily basis, but if you know you've got those top five done, you know you've still accomplished something for the day. There's still something to, to be grateful for there. And this doesn't have to be just around business, which is primarily, I guess, what I'm, what I'm talking about um, through the time management process, but this can be around health. This can be around family. Now, if you've got a relationship, so priority right now, it might be dedicate half an hour to have a conscious conversation with your partner or dedicate half an hour to exercise. But whatever those top five priorities are in any area of life, health, family, a relationship, social, emotional, spiritual, or, or financial, um, dedicating that time for it and putting that in the diary. Uh, my top tip number three is to do less every day. If your diary is, say, 100% full from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., put in some half an hour periods where there's just nothing or there's just scrolling Facebook or just being in nature or going out and having a surf. And so putting in some time in there where it is just for, just for rest, just for you and just for fun as well. Uh, my top tip number four is around what I mentioned before. Have a look at those top couple of people or those top couple of things that are draining energy and just seeing whether there's an opportunity to spend a little bit less time with those people or doing those things. And then taking that a little bit further, what are the top two things that are in your highest values and that you love the most? And can you do that a little bit more each week as well? Because we're naturally energised when we're doing what we love and we're naturally drained when we're doing kind of what we have to do or what we feel like we should do as well. And another great time management tip is aim for consistency, not perfection. Um, this applies for certainly business, certainly health, certainly relationships. It's better to be consistent with all those things than to just do a big burst when we're motivated. If I go in and do one big marketing thing once a month, that's going to have nowhere near as good an effect if I just do one little thing every day um, over, the, over the 30 days. So certainly a consistency over a big burst of perfection is way better than um, Top tip number six, which I also mentioned before, is when you're working on something, be it business, health, um, spending time with the kids, be there 100%. 60 to 90 minutes, do that burst, doing just one thing, um, and then have those breaks um, as required after that. But when, when doing those things, being really present and being really consistent with that as well. Um, number seven I also had was actually starting a gratitude ritual. Um, how this relates to time management is dedicating time for ourselves again. So I guess quite often we think about time management, we think about goals. But I also want to think about time management for self-nurturing and time, man time management for our own mental health as well. Um, for every day this year, so the last 10 months, I've done my gratitude ritual in the evenings, um, a couple of times in the morning if I was you know, really tired and forgot. Um, and every day there's been that gratitude in going to sleep and I think that's just created such a peace of mind and whether it be a good day or a bad day, still having those things to be grateful for and at least having, having that in the heart as we go to sleep there as well. Uh, my top tip number eight is to negotiate with your partner or perhaps even with your own children, um, put them to work. Get those kids, whether they're three, five or 15, give, give them one extra job that you're currently doing and maybe they'll even enjoy it. Maybe they want to make themselves breakfast from now on. Could you do your morning exercise, and maybe this is particularly for you, Stephen, while they're in there, perhaps not making breakfast, depending on what age they are, but at least eating it on their own, perhaps putting it in the sink. Um, one of the best things I heard was from a lady probably around six months ago. She came in to quit smoking with me, and she said, no, this lady was, no, this was for weight loss. 
She said when she was a single mum, every Sunday she used to run a bath and she'd be in there for about 60 minutes and she told the kids, you clean the entire house. So she's getting that time dedicated for her for self-nurturing and it worked. The kids actually ran around and cleaned the whole house. So if you can set up some routine and, you know, convince, manipulate the kids into doing that for you, um, that, that's got to be a great win there as well. So just kind of you being creative, seeing how we can not so much use other people, but see if it's something they'll actually enjoy doing um, to, to help us out there as well. Mm. Uh, my top tip number nine was to put, yeah, again, those things like health, things like fun, put them in the diary as if they were an appointment. So actually schedule them in, and this is one of the, the bonuses of using a diary, put that in, you know, 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m., my time. Um, whatever it might be, Put it, putting things in the diary so that we know what, what's happening at what time, even if something else turns up. Um, I actually had the experience, again, it was probably around six months ago or a little bit longer. Um, I'd already filled up my week with what I wanted it to be and, and the things that were really important to me. Um, some friends called me with trivial things, things that weren't really in my high values, and it was really easy to say no because I'd already filled up with my diary with what I wanted. If I left things just randomly in for, um, to the universe, I might have ended up doing something I didn't really want to do. But by pre-planning things ahead of time, um, I, know, I know that makes a big difference. Um, I know Jared fairly well, and I'm pretty sure on a Thursday, if the weather's good, he's going to be doing some water skiing. So he's got that dedicated in the diary, something that's one of his highest values, and, and putting that in like it's, like it's an appointment. And my top tip number 10 is a bit of a, an overly simple one, but one probably not to be underestimated, which is could we actually just move faster to get some jobs done? Are there work tasks where we kind of aren't really that focused or cleaning the house? Could we actually get that done in half the time? And if we motored around with that vacuum or doing some cleaning, could we get something done in an hour as opposed to two hours and actually create some time by using our energy as well? So there are actually three powers that we have or we can utilise as people. We can use our money, we can use time, and we can use our energy, and they're all transferable. So if I've got excess money, yeah, yay for me, I can use that money to create more time. I can pay someone to do my cleaning. Um, I could pay someone to change the oil in my car. Um, I could pay someone to design my website, for example. Um, if I have excess time, I could actually use that to make more money. So if I've got time management way under control, does that mean I can actually spend more time earning money or increasing my energy? So could I use excess time to relax more? Could I use excess time to have more fun? So when we've got excess time, we can actually use that to create more money or to perhaps create more energy and more relaxation. And on the other side, if we've got abundant energy, we can certainly use our energy to create more time by being creative and we can use our energy to create more money as well. So just keeping those three in mind, perhaps write those down as well, money, time and energy, how they're actually transferable and can we use those to create what, what might be missing in our life. So perhaps think about you know, which one is most abundant, money, time or energy, which one is the, the lowest at the moment, money, time or energy, and seeing whether you can use the high one to, to bring a bit more, bit more balance there as well.